Dr. Peter Fretwell. I work at the British Antarctic Survey here in Cambridge in the UK. Um, and my background is in remote sensing, looking at things from space for using satellites. Um, and over the last 20 years, I've been looking at many things um, in Antarctica and in the Arctic. Um, but I tend to do most of my work now using satellites to monitor um, polar wildlife. So penguins, seals, whales, walrus, uh, albatross. The emperor penguin is a, is a really unique species. Um, it's the only bird that breeds in the Antarctic winter. So Antarctica is an extremely cold, remote and harsh environment. So to breed there at all is incredible. But, but to breed around the coastline of Antarctica in the winter, in the total darkness, gets down to minus 50 degrees, windy, to, uh, is, is really a, unusual, a, totally unique. And to do that, the emperors develop many unique survival traits. Um, it's got really dense feathers. The um, it huddles uh, huddles together to keep warm. Um, but they're, they're such a, a, an incredible animal, unlike any other bird, really. And of course, as well as being the most southerly of the breeding species of penguins, it's also the largest, the heaviest. It can grow up to four feet tall and, and weigh up to uh, 30 or 40 kilograms. Um, and um, they, they come onto the ice, they breed on the frozen sea around Antarctica, and they'll they'll come onto the ice over the winter. So they start in the Antarctic autumn, which is about April time, and then they'll stay on the ice all the way through till December, when the chicks fledge and, and um, go back out into the sea. To have a successful breeding season, um, the emperors need to raise their chicks and, and they, they breed on the sea ice, the frozen sea, and, and it needs to stay stable until the chicks lose their little fluffy downy feathers and get their sleek black and white waterproof feathers, which tends to happen sometime in mid to the end of December. So the sea ice needs to remain stable until that period. Last year, we had one of the worst sea ice years, well, we had the worst sea ice year on record in December in, in Antarctica. Uh, and in many colonies, the sea ice broke up before the chicks fledged. This was particularly uh, obvious in, in one area, the Bellingshausen Sea, where the sea ice broke up early in four out of the five emperor penguin colonies in that area. Um, and, and we tracked this over time. So the sea ice started breaking up in October or November. And for four out of five of those colonies, all of the sea ice had gone before even December. So well before the fledging period of the chicks. We estimate then that if there's no sea ice there, then the chicks will go into the water. And that means that we'll have total breeding failure. Well, one breeding year is bad, but it's not an absolute disaster. We do have occasional bad breeding years. We rarely have them on a regional basis where a whole region is taken out. But the problem is now that we're seeing this um, again and again. So 2021 was bad. 2022 is worse. It may be that 2023 is going to be worse still because we're looking at a sea ice extent, which is much worse than we've ever seen before. The, the breeding success of emperor penguins is, is really tied to how much sea ice there is. And sea ice now has started to really decline over the last six or seven years in Antarctica. So it, it's not looking ho hopeful for emperor penguins. Um, predicting the sea ice has always been a challenge for us because it's, it's driven by so many things. But with this rapid decline of sea ice in many areas of Antarctica now, we're, we're see, starting to see a, an equally rapid decline in, in populations of, of emperor penguins. I started at British Antarctic Survey as a, as a cartographer, as a mapping, and then I got into um, GIS and, and remote sensing and satellite imagery. But for me, the breakthrough to I was always interested in the science um, and scientific mapping. The breakthrough to get into this side of um, the sort of science was was that we I accidentally discovered that we could see emperor penguins in Landsat imagery. That's a quite coarse imagery by looking at their poo stains, the brown stains of their guano on the ice. Uh, this was freely available imagery. Nobody um, nobody ever seen it before. Um, this meant that we could actually look and find where the emperor penguins were. At the time, we didn't know how many colonies there were, or whereabouts the distribution was. So this was really game changing. And over the last 
15 years or so, we've been around Antarctica and we've actually found double the number of colonies that we previously thought there were and, and doubled the known population as well. So it's been a really um, interesting and, and, and a personal journey for me with, with emperor penguins.